Okay, here we are again back in the uh, migration tool. I've rolled back the workstation um, just so that we're back at where we were before I logged in and destroyed the profile. Um, what I'm going to do now is to show you how to migrate the computer account in a way that maintains the user environment. So it's pretty easy. Um, you'll see we've got the Active Directory migration tool. Same way as before, but this time we're going to do a computer migration. Okay, there we go. Um, source and target, same as before. Uh, we're going to select computers. Obviously, if you were doing um, 100 or so, you'd have a text file with that would feed in the whole list of computer accounts that we're going to migrate. There we go. So I'm going to select my individual computer. There we go. Comp001. All right. Specify the location we want to put it. I'm going to put it into migration into computers. There we go. Um, and we want to specify what we want to translate. Now, I'm, I'm translating everything here, but depending on your environment, you might not want to do that. But um, for the demo purposes, I'm going to select absolutely everything. Okay, so we'll click Next on there. Now, again, for the security, you have an option. You can replace the security descriptors or you can add to them. Um, just for this demo, I'm just going to select Add. Again, for your specific environment, you want to do uh, a bit of thinking there to work out which, which model actually fits what you're trying to achieve. So we'll click next on that. Okay, so there's the delay before the restart after the wizard completes. Okay, we don't want to exclude any of the properties, so uh, we'll leave that as is. Okay, and this is the conflict uh, mitigation, so we'll leave it at do not migrate if there's a conflict. There we go, and now what we should do now when we finish, it should, should copy the computer account across. There you go. You can see that one account's been examined and one has been copied across. Now when we close this, we should now get the security tool running. There we go. Now, essentially the, the way the tool works, there's an agent that gets installed on the workstations and then there's a job that gets submitted to the agent that carries out the translation that we want. So you have an option of running this pre-check which is just here and what that does is actually installs the agent but doesn't run the job so what you could do in, in preparation is, is run the agent installation ahead of your migration batches okay so so just to show how that works what I'm going to do is run the pre-check just click start and what I'll do now is go off and install the agent it doesn't give you a lot of feedback unfortunately but there you go you can see the pre-checks passed so if we look at the migration log There we go, you can see that it's uh, being installed. So let, let's just give that a minute to complete. Okay, I think that's now done. So what we'll do now is actually run the update. Now to do this, we select run pre-checked and agent operation. Okay, now what that will do is is only it'll also make sure the agent's installed, but it'll also run the operations that we want to to happen. So what we'll do is we'll run that, hit start, and just leave it running for a little while. It can, it can take a few minutes to run. Okay, as you can see, that process now done. It said it's completed. You, you'll often get errors in this, by the way. Um, it's pretty rare that I've seen one that's completely clear. But if you look in the log, um, it'll show everything that's in there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah, like I say, it's pretty rare to actually see a totally clean migration file. So. What needs to happen now before we can use that machine is that that other machine, the, the client, needs to wait for that timeout period so it can reboot. But just for the sake of this demo, what we'll do is we'll jump over to the machine and we'll restart it. Okay, so let, let's wait for that to restart. It should only take a moment. Right, here we go. The machine's now restarted. So what we're going to do now is log in as our, our user, Andy Pandy. But what I'm going to do is log in to the target domain. So using the migrated user account as well as the migrated machine account. And what we should get, there we go. You'll see that we've now got the roaming... We've now got the roaming profile, sorry, the local profile that we had for the original user. So from a user's perspective, nothing has changed. Okay, it's a pretty important part of the migration because 
you know, if you get this bit right, the user doesn't need to know that things have changed. There's also, um, you know, little tweaks you can do to change the default uh, domain account, that sort of stuff. So I'll just log out again there. So if we jump back onto here, um, let's have a look in our ID. You'll see that our computer account has now come across, our user account has now come across, um, and we have a fully migrated user into our target domain and we've also maintained the user environment. So that is the preferred method. Obviously there, there's some prereqs that you need to go through, there's a few hoops you need to go through just to make sure that that process is smooth. But get it correct and the impact on your users should be far less than uh, the manual method that um, you, you tend to be using at the moment. So uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you found that useful. So what it should be able to show you is that a little bit of investment up front in time and getting that process correct should vastly speed up your migration time and also lessen the impact on your users, which um, in general makes life easier for everybody. Anyway, I hope that helps.